Wow. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the IPFS Implementers Meetup Sync Up uh, Tuesday, October 13th edition. Uh, today, we have uh, a, a few more IPIPs to uh, take a look at. We're renewing uh, the IPIPs we were looking at at last meeting and seeing if we can uh, get them ratified this go around. And then we're picking another set. That's all we have done on the agenda for now. Um, those in the call, if you have anything you'd like to add to the agenda, please add it to the end of the, this meeting section of the notes um, if you want to bring something up. Um, but with that, I think we should just kick off Lytle with the uh, ah, uh, Reed's decision of the V2 of the IPMP process. You want to start there? Yep. Uh, so I, I made the pass. Uh, I, I think uh, there were like no concerns around Reed's proposal. So what I did, I did like cosmetic change where I uh moved the ipip process description outside out of the ipip archive uh so now we have like a living document in the root of the repo and the legal like the the, the historical uh, ipip just points at that as a point place place when you find the up-to-date process uh, so it's like a just cosmetic edit uh, but you know git diff looks uh, like everything changed but uh, it's the the, the content is the same the last time we looked at it so i i i suggest we merge it or we, we could also like park it after lisbon in case we want to refine it uh but i think it's already like good uh there is so like i think i, I had like a, the only open question was around <laughs> language so uh, the concept of rejected ipip is maybe a bit harsh <laughs> i've seen uh communities <laughs> like uh, Vitor and they have the concept of deferred. So it's like, it's not something we need today, but maybe useful for someone. Uh, so we, we kind of like keep it a number and track for the future reference, I guess. Uh, but, but that's like the only kind of like neat on from my end. So uh, kind of like PSA, if, I, if others feel we sh it should like st be, stay open uh, post Lisbon, that's fine. But I'm also happy to merge it. Reed, do you want to say anything about it before? It's just yeah, concerned you wrote it and you're here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a little flat footed here because I wrote it a month ago and, and wasn't uh, ready to talk about it today. But um, I, I mean, I think the, the big thing I wanted to make sure we have is kind of like this concrete process where there, like there, there's some expectations around time, right? Like you're not going to open an IP IP and it just sits there for months and months or years uh, without getting looked at, right? So there, there'll be kind of like this triage process that we can do um, that that will filter through and say, okay, the, the, you know, not all of them are probably going to need to get discussed in a meeting like this. The other thing, but but identifying which ones are going to go through that process and, and pulling those in. The other thing is uh, trying to do an async first process, right? So we can we can set it up to where we say, oh, you know, you, you broadcast out that this is an IP IP under consideration. It's open for comment, um, and, and then there can be a determination made of like based on the feedback that comes in on that. If it's generally people agree, they're on board. It sounds good we can go ahead and move that through without needing to have a, like a long extensive discussion here. And then we use this sync meeting for the things that are a bit more controversial and need more discussion. So that's awesome. high level. There's a bunch of details of like how to actually mechanically make all that yeah. happen, but that's, that's the TLDR. Those, those are the nits, right? And then so like basically yeah. what we're saying here is this change basically makes it true that those of you who join these calls regularly, if you want to stay on top of all IPIPs, you need to be watching the repo and you need to, and it's totally fine and kosher for folks to just move things forward without it passing through this call. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah is it, is it fair to like, I'm just reading the, the specifics here that these, like, if you're not paying attention and nobody says anything about something, it will just pass. Is that like, it fails open basically like that? Well, so I, I, yes, I think that there is some truth to that. But one thing I would add is that we're defining this group called spec stewards, and we should probably 
look at like what that membership should be. Okay. I think that right now it's several people on the IP stewards team, which does make sense, but that shouldn't be exclusive to people working at PL on the IP stewards team. Uh, but there will be a group of spec stewards, which is a little bit smaller group willing to invest a bit more time than maybe uh, everybody who attends this meeting. And in that forum, we that's where you do that initial triage of this thing came in and make just kind of a quick snap like this is even meet a bar of where it needs to be considered. And so I think that that filtering process kind of makes sure that like there's not a risk of something really off the wall coming through and just not nobody pays attention and it ends up becoming part of the spec, right? Okay. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have uh, a... Mm, oh, now I lost my train of thought. Um, but... Uh, Around this process, around the process, uh, okay, two things. One, uh, this like falls true if no one cares. I don't believe it happens because uh, in the process we have this concept that there need to be at two positive votes from stewards, uh, from spec stewards. So it's like, um, if there's like, sure, like, uh, yeah. if no one blocks, it goes forward, but you still need to buy in from at least two people across entire like stewards group. There's a separate issue in IPFS specs repo, who should be there? Uh, I like that, that's like an open question. Uh, I, I want to, it to be across implementations, across languages, use cases. And the more diversity we have uh, of you, diversity of use cases is very important. It's not just like different, you know, languages mm -hmm. and doing the same thing, but we really need to think about uh, like bring people from different runtimes uh, using IPFS like on a large scale or small scale, offline first, or people who are fo or always online. It's very, very important because I've seen, uh, you know, the early signs of if we are, uh, if the group is not diverse enough, we will be like, the spec yeah. will get pu pulled into one direction. That's one thing. And uh, one thing I'm, I kind of like, uh, I commented on the, uh, on, on, on the PR, so I don't want to spend too much time, but that's kind of like related to the next, uh, item that uh, 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 Joropo uh, added to the agenda, which is uh, numbering IPIPs. So the current version of the proposed, uh, the SAG V2 is like, oh, if we are happy, just before the merge, we assign a number. Uh, but Thibault from uh, Cloudflare suggested that maybe we, when we do that initial evaluation, oh, is it like feasible? Are we going to invest stewards, uh, spec stewards time to work with the author? forward on this thing, maybe at that point we should assign a number so it can be like reference uh, forward. Uh, and yes. this is like an open question. Uh, I think like if we want to make a small change to the V2 before we merge, we probably should adjust that because I think it's a good idea. Right, and I did call that out. I, I think I caught you on that, Lytle. I, I, I did call that out in number seven on the process here is that I, I was kind of thinking the same thing is that we don't, we don't, it doesn't get a number till it's approved. So we just have to think about some kind of naming mechanism for how we open things before they go through the process. I think the point is really, we should give number earlier because it's helpful. Mm -hmm. Basically we can have like multiple IP IPs referencing each other as they do uh, with EIPs, uh, Ethereum improvement proposals. So, and the only, real drawbacks I can see with this is that maybe we have some IP IP, which we think is interesting at the start. So we give it a number and uh, later we discover that, no, we're not gonna follow up on that for whatever reason. We can have holes in the IP IP numbering. I think it's a minor inconvenience having holes like your list of IP IPs and to be able to use the number and just say, hey, IP IP 256, um, when referencing yeah. an IPIP can be, it is worth having holes in the, in the thing. I think, I think you're right. I think you're right because it's also just a change log really. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the, it, it's not the specs themselves. So yeah. Yeah. It does not need to be like chronological. It, 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 we, we need like a stable reference uh, that we can yeah. use in discussions. So yeah. I there's value on that. Okay, so even way, things that don't make it will get referenced. Right, like you can have yeah. things that don't work, and then you find out that you want to be able to refer to something that didn't work and refine it. Let's assign the numbers earlier. Yeah. Okay, but then this is an interesting point. Like maybe there are some stuff 
that we will want to merge, but uh, to explain why we didn't follow yes. through. So if we have like an IP IP that we reference to say, oh, this is a uh, similar, but it improved on X. Maybe we also want to give the original one with, but like with a comment saying, uh, this is known, this, this should not modify the spec. This is just why we didn't follow through or something like that. Uh, but this is a different issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, does it, I mean, do we really, is there any reason not to take a proposed IP straight into main? Like, does the pull request process really make sense for this, actually? Uh, I think it's being review, able to review on the main branch, everything that is presently part of the spec is much easier from a number of perspectives, I think. Like, yeah, I, I would be concerned about people being confused. Basically, what that says is that you would need to know to read the document to see the status of the document to identify whether it is canonical or not. And I think the easier thing to do is to look at a folder of canonical only documents, if that makes sense. Right? Just from the from a brand newcomer to a to a repo, like yeah. that idiosyncrasy of needing to know that you have to check the status of everything before you keep reading about whether or not it's actually part of the spec yeah. is like a, that's a bit of a foot gun that I'd like to avoid for newcomers. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So maybe if someone wants, I'm not saying it's a bit idea, but maybe we should have like two folders, one for things that we want to include because they have interesting insight, but we are not actually doing and for the thing we're actually doing. Uh, but we don't have such APIP yet, so we can probably yeah. solve that once we actually have the problem. Uh, yeah, I, I just personally feels like it's a separate issue that's grown out of a refinement. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, why don't we take different. the whole conversation about assigning IP IP numbers and do something separate in this in the interest of taking this V2 and getting it? I personally would like to just see this moved in now because it more closely resembles what we're actually doing um, right. and and carve out a separate issue for better numbering, um, which seemed, we already have an issue started on it in issue 303. Um, and so I'd love to just like move this to like, hey, let's get V2 in. I, I see no reason why we shouldn't have this merge before IPFS camp so that folks have a cleaner thing when they come to learn about our specs process. Um, to to totally agreed on we should get this in before IPFS camp. Um, maybe you know, I think good forcing function Lytle to bring this up and say, hey, I'm gonna we're gonna merge this. Uh, I don't know if everyone has like read. So why don't we say uh, we, we're gonna merge this by end of week unless we get any down votes, I don't know, from from this from this group, but like but yeah. put, give, give people a, a slight win on like, this is just about to learn, here's your last chance to engage with it before we push it forward. Um, and then I guess, I, or I guess, sorry, I guess the process is if two people like give it thumbs up, it should get merged, but let's like not do it until tomorrow to give people a chance to give feedback today. Yeah, also it's not the end of the world because now it's like, it's living document in the in, in the right. and we are still yeah. refining. We can make a V three, <laughs> right? We can. Oh, yeah. We will we make have a V three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so so going a little bit off script here, but um, you mentioned talking about this at IPFS camp. I love that. Um, we don't have a track right now where I think that that naturally goes in, but I think we need it. And it also oh, came up. Uh, we have one. <laughs> oh, do we? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the part where in this call, I asked Lytle to give a talk in the implementations track about the IPIP process. Hey, Lytle, do you want to give a talk uh, in the implementations track about the IPIP process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Good call. Cool. Already on my list, I, I, I didn't see them. Um, uh, well, I'm not like 100% sure if I will be able to, to join uh, hmm. because multiple reasons, COVID uh, and stuff. Uh, but if so, uh, if not, I'll do the recording either way. Perfect. Yeah. Well, we could we, could we we can discuss this more offline if needed, but I'm also thinking about trying to get a track together that would be kind of more of like a uh, a little bit more a kind of open discussion, community focused uh, track, right? Um, and, and so, it, it, Brendan, yours is it for implementers, or is it about implementations? Implementations, but we're we're doing two things in the implementations track. We're trying to nerd snipe as many humans as possible into working on IPFS which is going to be talking about how our process is great. And we're going to try to help people pick an implementation that best suits their application. So we have a dual mandate in that track. Um, and so okay. uh, the former, the first mandate is very much why I think people understanding if you're trying to choose an implementation, you should be able to see how are these implementations evolving? 
There are, yeah. and and one of your criterion, if you're a discerning open source uh, purveyor, is are the people making this implementation attending these meetings and helping coordinate on the spec, right? Um, right. And so I, I see no reason why it should appeal to both, and we should very right. much have that conversation. Well, and we and if we end up talking about this process in two different tracks at two different points during the conference, that's not a bug. Should be all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, cool. Uh, let's move on. Um, next up, we have uh, this, the numbering conversation. I, I think we should put a pin in the numbering conversation. We kind of had it, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but I want to make sure we move, get some motion and time for the tar. And uh, um, are we? Yeah, we're just going to talk about tar today. Um, yeah, but I before we do that, decisions on the IPNS specs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, sorry for like shuffling stuff around, but this is a short uh, one, just kind of PSA. Uh, the PR was like open for a long, long time. Um, I, I know that like maybe like un until someone wants to implement IPNS from scratch, they don't care. Uh, but it, at least now there's this spec which describes how things work. How do you sign a record? How do you validate a record is uh, <laughs> correct? Um, <laughs> Secure. <laughs> Secure. Um, so uh, ju just like PSA, it, does, I will merge it uh, by the end of the week, if, unless there, there are like any gaps uh, from someone who really is implementing it right now. Uh, and yeah, and, and, and I think we can move to the TAR one. Uh, I believe uh, since we talked last time, uh, Enric did a bunch of work uh, uh, spec-wise and implementation-wise in Kubo to uh, add the sanitization of the TARs that are returned by Kubo. Uh, and the same code in Kubo is used, will be used on gateways, but in general um, will be applied to all the places where the TAR is used uh, in Kubo. So that's like additional context. Um, we've added uh, a lot uh, to security section. And we also included uh, test fixtures. So there are like CIDs of uh, the directory, which should be fine and you should be able to fetch a tar. And you also get an example of a tar uh, in case you want to just eyeball how this internal structure looks like. The tar is not like deterministic, byte for byte. Different implementations can return your uh, items in different order because you know the or traversal order of inodes or uh, items in a big directory is not uh, part of kind of spec, but um, uh, it's useful uh, for implementers, I believe. And it's another artifact how, uh, at least I, I, I think uh, our spec should look like because it's uh, spec plus test vectors that you can use. Uh, and we included an invalid directory, which kind of like has names in UXFS, which point outside. Um, and that's kind of important uh, because, you know, uh, different languages may have different sanitization logic. In some cases, it's not a problem. In some cases, you may have a problem, but you don't know you have a problem. So the spec uh, having the security section hinting at those things, I think that's important. And that's how our spec should look like. Uh, I. I don't have any like anything more, Enrique. If you if you have any other comments around this, I'm I'm like positive uh, on ratifying this one. Yeah, I think you gave a very good <laughs> summary of all of it. So yeah, I think it's fine. Um, very clerical note: Are the test fixtures actually included and not just linked on IPFS? Like, are they part of the? Like the the tar file, is that part? Where is that? So is that it's a somewhere? CAD. That... It's a CAD and it's available on the public IPFS network. It's really good peer to peer network. I've been told. Super reliable. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go <laughs> download that now. All right. It's super uh, reliable <laughs> because it's pinned in multiple places. Like everyone should. Oh, shots fired. We should only Sign have like a magic folder that contains car file of all the CAD we reference. <laughs> Something like yeah, that. Almost, yeah, yeah. Almost but like someone aside, should build a giant like crypto incentivized system for storing these things. <laughs> yeah. But, just aside, it's a very good point, Brandon. Uh, that it should be like an item on the agenda, and we probably when we uh, kind of like clean up our uh, repos or the way we present specs, that will be part of that cleanup work. Is 
if there's a CID in a spec, it should not be up to a CID like the IPAP editor or the author to worry, is it available? That we like the 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 repo uh, responsible for spec process should have automation that automatically detects CID in the content, try to fetch it. If it can fetch it, it should automatically like pin it uh, and fail if it, it's not available on a public network. So like the author of IPIP, if he did everything by the book, it's fine. But if they did not uh, like announce it on the IPFS network, then the CI would fail. And uh, that's a val very valid point. So I agree, it should not be a burden. On, on people, but we could automate that. Thank you. I think that's perfect and a lovely way to end that out. Um, and, and also another tangent that we can avoid for another day. Uh, so we've got a positive vote from Lionel. Enrique is here, both the author and positive vote. Uh, I think this is great. I'm delighted to see uh, the dual use of both, like tar support and gateways. I think it's uncontroversial. We want it, uh, but this is a good chance to kind of stretch our spec muscles and see like, hey, like the identification of this client side tar bomb problem is a really nice like win that comes out of slowing down and actually thinking through things and having this be the type of IPIP that we can point to and say, hey, make it look like this, I think is really, really useful. And so I'm hoping just to call that out explicitly so others can glom onto that and say, hey, Lionel thinks this is a great example of a good IPIP. Let's, let's all point to that one and say, make it look like that. Um, cool. So decision in. I mean, it's not a it's not a vote, but like, okay, that's more than two thumbs up. All right, cool. Congrats, thank you, Enrique, for putting in a bunch of time into getting this thing over the line. Much appreciated. <laughs> no, but I also wanted to see it on the gateway. So, yeah. there's more coming though in the future. <laughs> there's always more, always more. Um, Lovely. Uh, so we have a decision on that. We have a decision on IPNS specs. Uh, we uh, hmm. next next up we have reframe. Any concerns around defaulting to Cbor? Uh, yeah, it's mine. Switch uh, to Cbor. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's also like mine. I forgot to mark. It's mine. Uh, I'm just putting it here. Uh, the context here is uh, reframe is a generic general purpose RPC that. Uh, it's using delegated routing in Kubo 16. Um, mm, the current uh, wire format is stack JSON, which is a bit wasteful in my opinion. Uh, I mean, production wise, you could, you are wasting around like 20% of bandwidth or cache storage. Uh, there are the like, rationale why we should switch to CBOR in production is on the IPIP. I just wanted to uh, remind folks there that does discussion. And also we had another issue with existing wire format. So it's like, we are already not very happy with the wire format. Uh, we need to invest some time to one, understand it, fix the existing one. So maybe like while we have uh, it fresh in our minds, maybe just uh, uh, add Cibor uh, support. And that way we have binary uh, wire format, which we are a bit more comfortable in production, I think. Uh, and that's it, just kind of PSA in case someone cares. I'm personally super into it. I thought we, well, in our camp, coming from the number zero side, we uh, uh, are not happy with DAG JSON. I think it's always, so would love to see DAG see more. Yeah, I, um, think, uh, I think like maybe like additional context here is like, um, uh, Enrique is uh, is working on uh, adding uh, DAG JSON and DAG CBOR response types to gateways. There will be IPIP uh, spoiler, <laughs> but uh, more or less, I think that this is like a part of like taking a step back. It's kind of like DAG JSON and DAG CBOR are the things that you could use on IPFS if you need something beyond files and directories. So. If that's the story we want to tell, and if that's the like, kind of like part of that, oh, what's the minimum IPFS? Like, what's the minimum number of codecs I would like to implement, right? If we are thinking in those terms, I think implementation-wise, it's important that if you have something other than DACPB, it does not like crash your node, or it, uh, it you can pin it, you can traverse it, 
uh, you can export import the DAGs as cars. Uh, the, we did not dog food a lot of that because uh, DAG Cibor and DAG JSON was not supported on gateways. So kind of like flagging that uh, if we enable that on gateways, more people will start using it. So it's in our best interest to ensure we have like proper DAG Cibor and DAG JSON support across the stack because uh, more or less people will start using it. Because uh, once you have like a, encoder decoder, it's not expensive to use it for other things. Yeah, and like that, this gets even more intense in resource constrained environments, right? You want to make up your best work on a Raspberry Pi, the less DAG JSON you need to write, the better. Uh, cool. Any any voices we haven't heard from? Does anybody have any reason why we'd want to? Seems a little bit procedural, but want to make sure that others have had a chance to grok what what's going on here. I think Jeropos uh, item is the next one anyway. Cool. Are we, uh, is that, is that talking? So there's some mixture of, I'm looking at reading the notes and like there's some overloading of Seabor and Dag Seabor. Which one are we talking about? Oh yeah, sorry. Two. We're talking about Dag Seabor only. Okay. I would, I would say that the downside of, 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 uh, of it would be just the 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 special wire format that um but it's not any different than dag json i guess i don't know how difficult it is to write encoders and decoders for these things but if you're in a scenario where you don't have access to libraries to do dag cbor then mm -hmm. because it's non-standard you know it's more effort i mean both of them are designed to be subsets they're just more restrictive versions of their more generalized counterparts and so like it's it, it like it's possible to have dag seabor largely through configuration of a store of a, of a stock seabor um, okay. codec and did a ditto for json but it really depends on the library you're using you can't just use like json parse from um, v8 land but uh yeah I think that's, but the point being that, and I think that's why Lado's bringing it up in the first place, like you can't meaningfully speak IPFS without DAG Seabor. Um, and so what we're trying to do is reduce the number of special things you need to, or keep the number of special things that you need to carry around to the current set. <laughs> and uh, and I, I think that yeah, argument is pretty compelling, good. right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so I think that's decision on that, um, if the Kubo team goes ahead and implements it um, as said, or if we're actually gonna land this as spec, I don't know where we're at on the reframe side of things, but um, it's just a nice chance to sort of just touch base on like stuff that maybe hasn't even fully made it into the spec. Um, yeah, I, I think there's one thing, um, for, for the spec with reframe, some things predated IP IP process or bypassed the IP IP process and that's, no good that can't persist so we will do things right for any changes like we can't we can't have any special backdoors here so um you know miss partly on the team in the past um but we'll we'll do it right going forward and feel free to hold us accountable to that totally but just to like hold you accountable to your own overly uh overly <laughs> strict standards of accountability the fpip process kind of, kind of came into, into existence uh very you know we've only gotten this ball rolling recently i don't think y'all deserve should be yelled at for not doing it um but i appreciate it uh cool uh Tropo. uh, uh yeah so the next point on not decision item we're not ready to talk on them uh where i mainly want to point out that um I have a new IPIP draft. Uh, I, we are interested in light clients, and I was writing one myself. And the goal is to help uh, extremely low performance devices like phones and microcontrollers, for example, um, be able to load files from IPFS. So uh, one of the key points I've noticed uh, with the current state of the of the spec is that it's quite hard for a client to effectively use the responses of the gateway. Uh, it's not hard, it's just expensive. I choose lots of memory. So I've made a card ordering, uh, a card ordering spec. So basically, if people want to take a look at it, please 
uh, tell me what they think about it. I already had uh, great comments from people. Uh, and the next one is like uh, Unix FS reboot. This one is not even uh, hey, not even either draft safe. Hey Hugo, sorry to say, just on the on the light client side. I just so to not pull you back, I just want to jump into it right now, real quick. Is like I know there is some, you know, useful, impactful work being considered around light clients. Is there a place that people could go to learn more about that, or will that be getting will that be getting any airtime at uh, IPFS camp? Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I think I don't know actually the track yet. I'm working on getting airtime about light clients. Uh, it, it should have. Uh, about IPFS camp uh, would probably be in the, I don't have IPFS camp in front of me. Okay, I just yeah. to, to say I was not planning to discuss uh, this synchronously. Just tell people, hey, if you can comment asynchronously, probably the best use of every on time uh, for now. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I'm not trying to put you on the spot in terms of time to discuss more things. It's just more, there's a lot of context here. And I think there's also a lot of potential for us to motivate the community around investing in this area there's like there's a lot to i think extract out of light clients um and i just was wondering if there is a way for a motivated person to learn more about the context and the possibilities that we're seeing with light contact uh, sorry with light clients if the, if it doesn't exist like that that's fine i just but if it did I, i'd love to be able to drop that link um for, for people no. to learn more about it it doesn't exist yet sorry okay uh, uh understood it sounds like uh, maybe just, the first artifact that people might be able to get is a talk at IPFS camp. Yeah, I've at IPFS camp. It's most likely to be in the browsers and platform and track. Platforms, yeah. Yeah. yeah, as long as we, as long as we point people to browsers and platforms, that's where this discussion is yeah, probably largely being housed. Um, cool. We we also have the IPFS native mobile working group, which is uh, similar to that. Um, but I think the browsers and platforms track it would be the one to attend and to speak at uh, for sure, where like client work is happening. Uh, in that neck of the IPFS community um, woods, we're in the, the Merkel forest. Um, we are uh, uh, one of the big conversations that we've been having is uh, actually around this larger theme of like what constitutes an IPFS um, implementation. And one of the biggest things that we're sort of focusing on that Dropo your work sounds like it's very much touching upon is that all clients uh, should be doing hash verification at the, at the point of where the data is being read. And so if this draft that you're working on Jerobo is making it such that it is easy to write a more predictable thing that is higher performance that get, earns you more room to do hash verification, which is in a lot of ways an expensive process, um, good. But one of the things you'll see coming out of that community that doesn't, doesn't usually join implementers calls, we're starting to talk a lot about and just how difficult that can actually be in certain contexts, like um, some of the work around uh, getting IPFS into curl um, and FFmpeg and other places. There, like, there's a lot of work to sort of do hash verification and why that is an important thing, <laughs> because you're fetching content from potentially anywhere. You need to know that it is the content you ask for. It's the whole thing. But uh, lovely. So attend the browsers and, and uh, platforms track if you want to learn more about light clients. I think would be the high level takeaway there. And looking forward to uh, uh, elevating your your IPFP draft Dropo as as the weeks go on. Um, and then you have another point, Dropo, on rebooting the Unix FS spec. You yeah. said it's just not ready yet. It's I'm working on that, just, just so yeah. you know we can skip it. Cool. Great to know. It's uh, yeah, lovely. Uh, cool. Um, does that cover everything we have? On, so we, our last agenda, the last thing we usually do with these conversations, we usually save the last 10 minutes to for selecting the next things that we're going to talk about. I don't think that we actually need to do that here because we have in two weeks time, we will not be having this meeting. Instead, we will all be, um, at a con most of us, not all of us, but many of us will be at a conference and at which point we can discuss a bunch of this synchronously. So the, the next meeting um, convening will be in a month. And so we might as well just use either asynchronous processes or in-person sort of, uh, processes to choose the next set um, to talk about it because I'm sure that whatever we think now, we will learn some things at camp and that will juggle what we, <laughs> what we choose to work on. Uh, I will put a, I, I ask an open question to, to folks who've been working on the um, deny list IPIP. Uh, where are we at with that? Have the Cloudflare folks found a way to reopen the new um, 
because I know that they had to sort of reboot that process. Can we get a yeah. quick on the record check in on that? Yeah, I, I believe uh, they did not open the thing, but we closed the old one. Okay, cool. Um, in the event that uh, Cloudflare folks are bandwidth constrained, uh, I know we are actually, we actually have the denialist in our implementation. I know that, does Kubo have it? Is it? No, okay. And so there's, okay. So we're, we're, we're still fine here. Um, but it would be good to make sure that what we don't want to avoid is just because someone has been with constraints to actually move something forward. If we can, if we all sort of accept that, Hey, there's this thing that made it to like almost all the way to completion. And then for logistical reasons and timetable reasons, we just wasn't able to get over the finish line. Uh, it would be awesome to, to discuss how we make sure that that actually, um, makes it over the finish line. If we look at the meeting notes from our last meeting, um, we have a pretty clear indication of how to get the, the denialist format into um data and something that we could all approve um, yeah. but uh, for what it's worth uh on the kuba site we have this issue to kind of like essentially like add allow this denial list for c like content and peers uh and uh, cloudflare's ipip even though it's close is referenced there so it, like whenever we get back to kuba implementation like we for sure will have to pick up the spec work if uh, Cloudflare does not get to that first, I think. Cool. Great. So um, I, I just, oh, sorry. Can I jump in with go ahead, Reed. Of course. So j just as far as uh, next meeting goes, um, we should, I think that we ratified the new IPIP IP process now, right, V2. So we should snap to that, which probably implies that we got to get the stewards group and there's some ambiguity around like the definition of that at the moment we'll work on that but we should probably get the stewards group together before this group meets again to do that triage of issues and and, and start to identify what are the like that would be more kind of getting consistent with the v2 approach what do you think is the stewards group intended to be cross-organization absolutely it should be if it's not then we need to fix that in my view yeah so based on that i i think asking cross org meetings more than once every two weeks is a lot um and so if we're going to handle this we should try to handle it async i think the bigger concern is uh identifying and actually ex making explicit the members of that group so that they know that they're um to gus's point early on about um hey we don't want to see spec changes through the dead of night um the way you scale this without a, a proper hierarchical management structure is identifying an explicit set of stakeholders that need to be notified um and some folks who know hey somebody is changing gateway specs someone that, uh, working on elastic ipfs needs to know right because they run a really big fancy gateway and if it's not if they're not up to speed that's a problem um and so like that's it, it's this is already laid out that spec that stewards group needs to contain those members and those members need to know to notify each other when in particular ipips that cross into their domain areas of interest well show up but let me clarify a couple pieces okay so the the stewards group is really meant to be a fairly small group of people who are really committed to potentially some extra time and engagement involvement to mm -hmm. do that but the stewards group is not independently making any like major decisions. decisions. Right? I mean, right. they're sort of doing this filtering to kind of get some of the garbage out of the process and then make sure that we're talking about things that matter. And then we're going to have processes to make sure that we, the, the whole community is notified. I mean, really, I think we should have a thing in the forums. Maybe that's actually called out already, but a, a forum that is, you know, we, we post a proposed IP IP change, get feedback on that through the forums. And then that's the, then the stewards is the group that says, okay, based on the feedback we've seen, is this just ready to be ratified or is it something we should bring to like this implementer sync? Okay, I think that's different. Um, I don't see why the stewards group needs to be cross org then in the sense that it, what we're talking about, two things that I'd call out there. One, um, whole community is gonna create a lost signal. Um, it, and I don't think that it's, uh, and, and then you just run into the signal degradation problem where like, you know, we have to do these wide blasts about everybody needs to care about towers in the gateway. like you know the set of people who needs to know about tars in the gateway is largely an, a set of known 
people. Yeah. And I think it is on the onus of implementation authors to self-select and attend to these things and say, hey, I want to have a hand in, in, in modifying this. Um, because it's, yeah, we just, I think we're going to run into the issue of like creating a lot of noise <laughs> that will be very difficult to manage or scale in any meaningful way. And on the other side of it, it sounds like, Reed, I love your articulation of the way that that stewards group would work. Basically, that's the set of people who are focused on making sure the trains still run on time, right? Like the people that are, right. hey, like, we're going to tee up everybody for success so that when somebody is brought into the, to like, hey, you need to know about this, they're getting a really high signal um, thing. Um, that to me is great. And, and so I, I really fully support what you're saying. I just want to make explicit that, that that's actually two groups in my mind. There's the, the, the stewards who are keeping the trains running on time. And then the implementations community, which is which should also be an explicit group of people that are known very well by the stewards. Yeah, and I, I think that is the, I think that that is defined and kind of generally the way that I at least that was in the back of my mind it was very similar to what you're saying. I think the mod that I'm hearing from you is um, that there needs to be some explicit like this the the stewards need to explicitly think of. If we're going to approve this IPIP, who does it impact the most and really reach out and make sure that they are engaged in kind of the process as defined? Yeah, okay. I think that to, to give you an example of this, um, and, and, and we haven't really talked about this as a community, on the Kubo releases, there is a set of organizations that are required to be notified when a release candidate comes out. Um, I don't even know if we still do this anymore, but um, we were on that list and for a long time. And despite the fact that maybe, I don't know what the internal sort of like Kubo team knows of this, but we really appreciate it getting those heads up that, hey, there's a new release candidate and someone needs to specifically at mention these nine organizations that all have a yeah. pretty extensive set of test suites that all run IPFS as a library in their code bases. And that made, and we, for a hot minute there, we were all actually running the new release candidates on against our code bases and giving uh, meaningful feedback. I think we need a very similar process here. Just because that one faded out doesn't mean it was bad. I think we just, the upside was that group was explicit and they were known entities who would give much more high signal feedback to a small group of, in this case, what would be the stewards team that really is in charge of running a pretty big operation in terms of an entire spec sort of suite of specs. This is a lot of work, right? And so That's like, right. We want, to make, we want to make sure that that, that the, everybody there is well known and that, um, you know, I don't even think that every implementation needs to be notified about every IP, IP, right? Like ordering of car files, real in the real. I don't really care. Um, yeah. Elastic IPFS folks deal in car files all day long. <laughs> and so like, they need to know about that spec, like in a big way. Um, and so, yeah, you see the, the like, it, and the number of folks who would know that are like small, but that's okay because it, what's important is we all opted into this um, conversation and want to make sure that we know about stuff. That makes sense. There's it's a, pretty nuanced. There, there's some, yeah, and we'll we'll evolve and iterate on this, right? I mean, um, but I think I get the general point you're you're making, and and so let's let's aim in that direction. Um, one thing that Steve has been uh, pointing out in the chat thread as we've been talking is. Uh, Name confusion around using the word stewards. I, I think it's a great point. So maybe maybe we kind of uh, put our heads together and think about what is a better name for this kind of core group. It could just be spec maintainers. I don't know. But, you know, something other than stewards just to avoid confusion with the team within PL that is doing IP stewards. 100%. Also, uh, I, I I came in pretty heavy handed with all those opinions. This is just me ranting. You don't need to do any of this. <laughs> just to caveat that. Um, well, I think cool. it's a really good point to uh, it. You're what I'm hearing is like multicast instead of broadcast. Yeah, it's just it's how do we scale uh, high? How do we scale it such that the people who need to know know, so that we avoid Gus's immediate reaction of like. I don't, I, no one wants to wake up and find out that the spec for Unix FS has changed to yes. something that they don't have, to, that they no longer want to implement, right? And you don't want to have and to at the same time, you, you got to keep, you got to yeah. keep, yeah. But at the same time, we need to move forward, right? Like, right. there are many cooks in this kitchen and we need to keep, make sure that they actually, we actually make progress on these things. Well, so that it's, there has to be a balance. There's a key requirement I'm hearing, which is, 
you, you, nobody wants to wake up in the morning and find out that something they care about was done and they had no voice in it. And you don't want to subscribe to this really noisy fire hose and, and be constantly monitoring that to make sure that something doesn't go by. Mm -hmm. Putting our product hats on, the users of the specs are yeah. companies implementing IPFS and a good user experience is <laughs> um, uh, a notification system that is not spammy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so that's, that's what we're aiming for here. But Cool. cool. Um, what is what is good. actually? I guess we have to do is we we have some type of mailing list or or notification list that um, focus on the notifications for um, spec releases on a certain stage or or whatnot. And then we have the other mailing list or group that is focused on the more day to day, -to -day uh, stuff. So that's that's how um, a lot of the foundations do is they have different groups for uh, different activities and they have a list of like the for different companies who's who's who in, in that company is like the the point of contact to uh, be in, in meetings or be notified for uh, whatever and, and, and so maybe that's one of the things we can we can do is have separate lists of or uh, either mailing list or uh, contact list or whatever for the different uh, interest parties uh, involved in and on. One hundred percent. I think it's uh, yeah. Having those different lists, most uh, the thing that I want to point to is like having the list makes these implicit groups explicit, and that's really useful in a lot of ways. Where it's like we know who the people are, and we don't want to have these just overlay onto social structures that are sort of oral knowledge if we can avoid it actually knowing like, hey, these are the people <laughs> is, is, a, is a way that it makes it transferable so that when somebody new joins, Alexandra, when you join, when you join our community, like, oh, cool, these are the folks that I can sort of follow and pull on thread and look at and see what they're doing. Um, yeah, and I think and, that's and, really important to allow onboarding. Yeah, and, and one more like, so there, there are different sets of uh, formality for, for those things. So for example, Kubernetes has, they have everything structured in, um, in a Git repository where they have like YAML files for um, everyone that that's in a certain group and whatnot. So yeah, uh, it's probably helpful. We just gotta um, figure out the like the right point of uh, formality we want, and <laughs> just to avoid being bottlenecked by bureaucracy. Um, but there's definitely benefit there. Totally. Thank you everybody for joining. Does anybody have any last words before we part? See you in Lisbon. Oh my gosh. See all of you in person. Most of you. It's coming very quickly. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks a lot, Thank everybody. Have a Bye. great uh, couple of weeks. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Adios. Thanks. See ya.